The EDL is run by a secretive leadership team. The Guardian has requested interviews on several occasions to put these allegations to them, but they have refused to appear on camera. Towards the end of March comes news that a rally is planned in Bolton. More than a thousand people have turned out to oppose the EDL. Keep moving, guys. Keep moving, please. please. There is much more tension in the air today than there was in London. And police make 73 arrests, 54 of them anti-racist protesters from Unite Against Fascism, including Wayne. On the other side of the barrier, the English Defence League arrives in force. The Guardian talks to some of its supporters. It's a backward, not, it's a backward mentality, we're the back of religion, the backward left-wing queers, the, the backward. Nah, no, blacks and niggers, they're, they're all right, man. But it's the packies, man. Have you always felt like that, mate? Yeah, since being a little kid. It is too easy to dismiss the English Defence League as simply a rerun of previous far-right organisations. It has acted as a lightning rod for people with a range of grievances who appear to be coalescing around a rampant Islamophobia. I fear your student clubs. I fear for your Muslim fundamentalist groups. You are not English. You are not English anymore. I'm a patriot, not a racist. Huh? Patriot, patriot. I believe freedom of speech, which Muslims, Islam wouldn't allow. And they didn't allow. No, but they wouldn't. I believe gay rights. We have lesbian rights, we have women with people to work, we have family rights. Is anything wrong with that? No, there's not. As long as I'm standing here, look, I'm putting my heart, I will demonstrate against what you do not believe in. Uh, I want British jobs for British people. The message of Islamophobia can rally groups beyond your traditional white British voter, and, and the EDL has actively tried to galvanise those. Does this mean that the EDL believes in a uh, sort of truly um, sort of pluralist, multicultural society? No, I don't think so. Does it show that there are sections of this population that are concerned about Islam beyond the core constituency of the far right? Yeah. Two weeks later, I travelled with the EDL supporters for a demonstration in the Midlands town of Dudley. Things got much worse. Posing as an EDL supporter, I spoke to this man, Gurmit Singh, a British born Sikh and one of the EDL's core leadership team. He told me the organisation is planning to target some of the most iconic Muslim communities in the UK. Yeah, Bradford will be huge. The problem with Bradford is like the security threat, you know what I mean? Highly populated in America, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I've fucking got massive. They're very militant as well. Yeah. They don't take fucking much from the people walking out of their problems, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a big security thing, so once we get over that, we can sort something out, then we'll be going to Bradford. Bradford's the place that's currently hit, you know what I mean? Just so I can tell them. I mean, Tower Hamlet, you've got the East, East London Mosque, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Islamic uh, Forum for Europe, uh, and that's basically the epicentre for the fucking that's headquarters for Islam. Up until now, the police have been able to control these EDL protests, but all we need is for one to go wrong, for there to be a major disturbance, and I think you'll see it spread across the country, you know, in, in a real summer of violence. <laughs> It is clear the organisation is aware of its potential to spark serious violence. A few hours later, those predictions appeared to be coming true. After tearing down fencing, hundreds of EDL supporters went on the rampage and only a huge police presence prevented serious disorder. Many of the EDL demonstrations I attended felt like they were on a knife edge. One serious incident could have led to widespread unrest. Over the next few weeks, the EDL is planning to demonstrate in Newcastle, Cardiff and Dudley. <laughs>